These are the Everglades, the tropical wetlands of southern Florida. And they start north of here in Kissimmee River and come all the way south to Florida Bay. Historically, the Kissimmee River meandered for 103 lush green miles from Lake Kissimmee to Lake Okeechobee in the south. When the rains came, the river would spill over into the extensive floodplain, which at points was up to three miles wide. Species such as eagles, alligators and bass thrived within this diverse floodplain ecosystem. But this natural paradise was disrupted in 1947 by a series of catastrophic hurricanes. The Kissimmee Basin was inundated with flood water, as were the cities surrounding this part of the Everglades. Residents demanded protection from the floodwaters, so in stepped man and machinery. 1948 saw the end of this naturally meandering river, as the US Army Corps of Engineers stepped in and were given the instruction to channel the river into a 56 mile long concrete canal known as C-38. Taking 11 years and with work being completed in 1971, this was a hard engineering project on an enormous scale. Problem solved, or so US Congress thought. Fast forward a few years and what environmentalists have been saying all along eventually came true. As the wetland ecosystem was drained dry and around 10,000 hectares were lost, the species who had previously thrived here began to decline. Studies showed that there was a 90% decrease in wading birds and waterfowl populations and a 70% decrease in bald eagle populations. Research continued for around two decades and in 1992 the decision was made to switch to a soft engineering approach which would hopefully reverse some of the environmental damage. 50% of the project cost was funded by the US Army Corps of Engineers and the other half was funded by the South Florida Water Management District. The scale of the proposed restoration project was unmatched anywhere else and the costs were astronomical. The initial channelization cost $20 million, but the restoration project was estimated over $400 million. Gradually, a portion of the canal was backfilled, allowing the water to spill over into the floodplains once again. Although the project will only reach completion in 2020, there are clear signs that life is returning to the Kissimmee River. Bird species such as the northern pintail have now returned, and as the oxygen levels in the water increase, fish species like the largemouth bass are once again beginning to thrive. Scientists who are carefully monitoring the program have set up 25 performance measures, which test everything from water quality to reptile populations, and they've concluded that the river restoration project is meeting and even exceeding their hopes for the project at the beginning. However, a compromise had to be reached between ecosystem protection and flood protection. The initial flooding problem threatening the cities in the upper Kissimmee Basin had not disappeared, therefore only 44 of the 56 miles of the canal was restored. If any more river restoration was done, it would have jeopardized the flood protection for Orlando and Kissimmee. So flood protection on the Kissimmee River is a unique example of where a social and environmental compromise had to be reached, albeit at a huge price. This solution, a combination of channelization and river restoration, protects both the wildlife of the floodplain ecosystem and the residents who live in the upper Kissimmee Basin. It's a clear example of where technology is only beneficial when it's used in partnership with nature. Hard engineering complemented by soft engineering. And looking around me, I'd say that the cost of the restoration was worth it.